Welcome back to JMC Live. We have Pastor James Hodges on the line. We're going to talk now about his book, War of the Horizon. So can you explain to our viewers what is this book about? I mean, we know a little bit of some of the reasons why you've written it, but you want to give them a quick little overview about it? Well, yeah, um, what can I say? It's, um, and I like, I know there's some questions in the chat room here too, uh, I'll, I'll get to as well. And, uh, I do want to say hello to a good friend of mine, by the way, uh, who happens to be in the chat room, um, I know personally and who lives, he lives in Florida at this time and, uh, him and his, uh, if I may say girlfriend, uh, Amber, <laughs> uh, hope I don't get in trouble saying that, but, um, uh, hello, Justin and Amber. God bless you all. And also love Leah. I don't know her personally, but God bless. Uh, I'm assuming love Leah is a, uh, a woman. And, um, but hello to all them. And, but about the book, it was, um, a, a lot, some of the things that, uh, questions that I have and then other people had and I try to answer through uh, the characters in the story and um, especially it it deals with also a sample in, in biblical dream interpretation um, there's an amazing ministry people can do uh, if they're uh, I found especially I find out more about people with, and we study the scriptures what it says about dreams and the opposite of what the psychics and all that says there is, there is a um, a, a lot of things I'm uh, like I said do the characters, but basically I deal also with secular humanism. You know, like the um, uh, uh, skeptics of what the Word of God. See, many people uh, believe, uh, especially if they're trained in today's schools and universities, is that the public mindset among the secular world is that if you believe the Bible, you must believe the Earth is flat. Not so. The Bible never said the earth was flat. Matter of fact, it actually teaches us that the earth was round before a satellite was ever shot up into space and before anybody ever sailed the ocean blue And uh, because it says in Isaiah 40, verse 22, that it is God, or it says he, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And, um, and on and on I can go. So one of those, like that kind of question... I, I get in things like that in the book uh, through the character Becky Banks, who is a news reporter covering a world conflict. Uh, a lot of uh, catastrophes is happening, happening, and she meets a a naval chaplain aboard the ship that she is on. He's the chaplain of the ship who has a a past where. He's still trying to figure out this experience he had during a thunderstorm. He thought he saw words on lightning bolts. And that, and part of that was uh, actually, that goes a little bit of, uh, of course, I dramatized it in the story through the life of Clay Silver, the chaplain. But um, I used to believe that I saw words on lightning bolts. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, <laughs> um, that uh, I actually thought I saw that one time and I, and but I couldn't read at the time. But that was actually the beginning inspiration. I, I centered that around the character of Clay Silver, but I once again, I fictionized it, added some things, but to teach, uh, you know, make his character very unique. And uh, that's when it starts out, just him standing in, the, in a storm. And many people have said this, uh, you know, like it says, let another man praise you, but not your own lips. So I'm not trying to... Uh, pat myself on the back, but, I've, but I'm just saying what other people have told me, that everyone who has read War of the Horizon, that they're not bored when they read it. They're, and these are not people who like to read also, and they said it just jumps out to them. It flows nicely. That's the word. That's the common thing I hear is it flows nicely. Um, and I like to hear that. And while they're learning something from God's Word, I also answer the question uh, through the conversation that Becky Banks um, and she represents as uh, the secular humanistic mind, educated and all that, very educated, but does not have God in her life. Um, I answer the question later on in the book 
that, and she's the one that asked the question, is how do other people, how would other people know about uh, Christ who have not a preacher or a missionary at their country? I answer that question. It's uh, rather uh, a unique, um, it's there in the Word of God, and I try to answer, I probably could have answered it better maybe, but um, but I don't think it leads to more questions than answers. But um, but I, once again, I touch on those things, and I think you and Miranda have said, too, that uh, I'll let you say this. Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but, um, uh, but of other, especially other people, they were intrigued by the captivating twists that are in the story, the suspense. And it's got everything in this. It's um, you're, it's you're got, completely it's got correct. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that you can quote us as saying, and this might, you know, help, is "War of the Horizon" is a mixture of Star Trek, Top Gun, and the Left Behind series, all like wrapped into one little book. So you have the sci-fi of the ships and everything. Then you have the more militaristic style of Top Gun. But then you have the biblical aspect of something like the Left Behind series. Combine it all together and that's just the way it just seemed to turn out to come for me. I know other people may think different things. But uh, I think it's a great book, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I believe that you can make a series out of this. It does have a, a really good ending, but the whole east and east and west split on the on the earth, and it looks like there could be something else that could happen next, and just within the the world frame because what you set up here is the end times world treaty and there's an east and west earth meaning earth is pretty much split in a dividing line and there's been this big war going on and then this peace treaty is signed and that's what this book is about it's a it's written around the peace treaty it's written around a few different characters someone struggling with their faith someone strong in their faith and at the end, someone has to make an ultimate decision on how to save people. And it's his decision alone. And if he doesn't make the right choice, the whole earth will be uh, in peril. Mm-hmm. That's the book pretty much shortened down in a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to transition now... Uh, if you want to scroll through the chat and pick whichever question you want to answer, I know there's been two or three. You're more than welcome to answer the questions in the chat live if you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd rather do that than probably type it. Uh, um, I know that uh, Leah, love Leah, uh, had a question concerning, and let me find it again here. I do know what, uh, I don't want to go by my own memory uh, what some scriptures to use to witness to New Agers. Um, according to Leah, she has no sound. Um, but um, I recommend, once again, first of all, I really, uh, because this is filled with a lot of scriptures here. Um, as she said, the show called off on her now. <laughs> um, it might ha- I might have to type this in or... The, or we can um, we can just play it. what happened is probably the thirty second commercial kicks okay. in every fifteen minutes. Okay. But but yeah, um if you if you want to answer the question, it's um and then I can answer it too. So the question was what scriptures do you use for ministering to people that are involved in the cult? And I actually want to throw in a second half of that question. What scriptures do you personally use for your own walk? And what scriptures do you use to help other people? Are they like the same scriptures? And if so, what scriptures are these? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, the First Timothy 2.5. 1 Timothy 2.5 is, uh, is very important because of uh, the, the, 
it talks about the one mediator. Many of the uh, many of the uh, people in, involved in the occult is going to believe in. Uh, they're going to be polytheistic and believe in many various gods. And this talks about one mediator between God and man. Also, First Timothy three sixteen. Uh, that's kind of easy to remember too because of uh, uh, the it mentions in First Timothy three sixteen where great is the mystery of godliness. God is manifest in the flesh and it teaches that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. And uh, Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 18 is very important. It gives the prophecy of the Messiah. And um, especially, a lot of weird things can happen when you're ministering Deuteronomy 18, especially if someone's demon-possessed. Um, because after you get through talking about the um, after you get through talking about all the mentions against the divination, the astrologers, things like that, where God will raise up a prophet with a capital P. It's a prophecy of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that Moses uh, mentions. Um, it, it does, uh, it, that's when some people can start going crazy on that. Um, if they're controlled or uh, demonization, if I call it. But the most the most effective thing that I found, I mentioned this on, uh, I believe when I did a blog talk radio, uh, Hodgepodge Horizon, uh, my Once in a Blue Moon show that I do. <laughs> um, there's this thing I mentioned called uh, it's it's a laminated booklet. It's all it's all fold out. It's not pages to it. You fold it out. It only costs like three or four bucks. And it's called Magic Spells and Divination. It's uh, 10 Frequently Asked Questions, Q&A, on Magic Spells and Divination. Now, the terms Magic Spells and Divination is uh, mentioned in large burgundy print. And once again, it's a beautifully beautiful laminated uh, fold-out uh, pamphlet, booklet kind of thing. And it gives talking tips for those that in uh, that background. Uh, like, for example, it, the, the questions are, is white magic okay since it's using powers for good? It gives what they say and it gives what the Bible says and gives another fact of what you should also know. Uh, it gives, does casting spells really work? Uh, also, another question that it answers, and these are in-depth questions. They, these are in-depth ans answers. It says, are witches also Satanist? What's the difference? It answers that question. It answers, does astrology work? Uh, let's say question number five is, is it okay to read your horoscope just for fun? Um Oh, this is a good question that always got me, too, was uh, is that uh, in the, the sixth question on here that it answers in-depthly is what's the difference between a psychic and a biblical prophet since both foretell the future? Uh, that is a good answer here and a good question that many people are confused about, just as I was at one time. Um, and is it okay to contact the dead? Um, are there such things as ghosts and haunted houses? What about the Ouija board? Is it just a game? And then the, what's so funny, the last question on here is about crystals. All right, James, we're going to take a break, and then we'll wrap up with the, with the book, and we'll be right back. Yes, 